welcome to the Feed You podcast, giving you the real scoop on raising your business to new heights. Expert education, inspiration, and motivation to fuel your purpose, your passion, and your profits. Here's your host, Elisa Connor. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Feed You podcast. I'm Elisa Connor, and I'm your host, and I am so grateful you're here. Thanks for tuning in this week. We are hitting it hard talking about why you would need a landing page versus just an opt-in form on your website to get people to sign up for your email list. And um, there's some specific reasons why you would need a landing page versus an opt-in form, and I'm going to go through those. I have a total of six um, reasons. And then I also have some tips for you at the end, if you don't happen to have a website of things that you can do to create that landing page without having a website. I don't recommend not having a website for long, but I'll dig into that in just a little bit. So, um, the reason we're talking about landing pages is, you know, I don't talk about this very often and nearly enough, but one of the biggest ways to grow your business is to grow your email list. And so you, in order to do that, you need to have a place for people to land, regardless of how you're promoting your business and opt in for information. So you can gather their information and grow your list. And so a lot of the episodes that I talk about um, will refer to, you know, creating content to drive that component. So you're promoting that content, but what we don't really talk about is what happens when they get to um, your website or your landing page, wherever it's housed. And uh, there's a couple options for that. I'll dig into those in just a minute, but really we need to get them somewhere so we can collect their name and their email address at minimum. So um, we need to do that by creating either a landing page or an opt-in form or um, some sort of ability to uh, collect that and then um, store that in a database, which is typically by email service provider and continue to market to them. So eventually we can sell their products. And a lot of people start um, at the beginning of this funnel and really you need to be thinking about it from the end of the funnel and working backwards, just so if you can think about that. So where do you want them to end up? What, and then what steps do they need to take to get to that result, um, to that end point? So uh, that's why there's a lot of failure with, um, you know, people when they're marketing online, specifically when they're marketing in social media, because they just create a bunch of posts, they stick it out there, and um, they soon become overwhelmed and overworked because they're constantly trying to um, keep up with Facebook, keep up with Facebook changes, keep up with Instagram, um, create posts for all of these different places, hire people to create the posts, but in the end, they're not leading anywhere. And so people get really frustrated by spending a lot of time on, and money with social media when really they need to be looking at the end result first. So um, wherever you're trying to get them, whatever product or service you're trying to get them to purchase back up from there. And um, one of the key components of that system is to create a landing page in your email um, sequence. So before we get started and before I dig into those six different tips for why you would want to use a landing page versus an opt-in form, let's take a minute and hear from our sponsor. One of the biggest frustrations I hear from business owners on a regular basis is I need more clients and I get it. Every business struggles with getting new clients until you know how to do it. The problem is, is you spend your time networking and going to events and making phone calls that don't go anywhere. You're out trying to attract people to you when there is a much easier way. Growing your email list is so important because it fills your list with potential clients who actually want to hear from you. And it gives you the ability to reach out to them on a regular basis and share what you have to offer. To grow your email list, you have got to have a great free download. Sign up for our free newsletter isn't working anymore. You've got to create a download that piques their interest, gets them to take action and adds them to your list. Sounds easy, right? Of course it's not easy. That's exactly why I created my new free training to help you create an awesome free download. You can sign up at elisaconnor.com forward slash create my freebie. This live training is going to present the five easy steps that I've used with my clients to help them go from hot mess marketing to 
growing an email list that they consistently get sales from. So you don't want to miss this training. Head on over to alisaconnor.com forward slash create my freebie and sign up today. I'll see you inside. So let's jump right in. I'm sure you're wondering, okay, Elisa, really, what really is the difference between having a landing page or an opt-in form? They both collect information. They both have um, the opportunity to connect to our email service provider, and they both get us what we need, which is to grow our email list. So why does it matter if I use a landing page or if I just use a form? So I want it because that seems like such a simple question. Um, I really wanted to take an episode to explain some of the big differences of just sticking either an opt-in form on the front page of your website versus, you know, in the terms of conversion and actually getting people to sign up for that email list versus having, versus having a dedicated landing page that is specifically set up to um, invite people to join your list for a specific reason. And that starts us off with number one, there is a very specific intent behind setting up a landing page. And when you have put a specific intent behind that landing page, um, it is clear to your visitors who come there. And there are really three different intents. Number one is, is if it's a sales page, you're intending to sell them something, a product, a service, um, an event, whatever it might be. The intention is, and the intention should be, if it isn't, to specifically have them take that one action. This is where I see a lot of people go wrong, is they set up a page or they um, set up a form, an opt-in form, in the middle of their website, and they're trying to sell a product or service. Well, the human brain does not does not focus well. We need to assist it whenever we can. And when you have your opt-in form in the middle of a really busy, say, homepage, and there's all these other things that can take their attention, for example, uh, your blog. They might have intended to go there and sign up for your whatever freebie you're offering, but then they see, oh, there's an article right here that I see dancing across the screen. That's their newest blog article. I'm going to go read that. Well, then if there isn't a call to action at that end of that blog article that sends them directly to what they came up, came there to sign up for, you've lost them. Likely is they're going to read the blog article, they're either going to share it or they're going to close the window and go back to what they were doing. So giving them a specific call to action, a specific intent of going to that page and then sticking with that specific intent will actually increase your conversion rate. So number one is to actually sell them something. And you know, you've done a lot of work up to here. You don't want to just send people from say, um, I don't know, a Facebook live that you've met them one time or an event that you met them one time to a sales page. You've got to do a little bit work of work and build that relationship a little bit. Does that mean you shouldn't sell to them right away? You can give them the opportunity. However, I'm recommending that you probably want to build the relationship just a little bit more because you're going to have a higher conversion rate. That's kind of the point. Um, the second intent that you might have is that you actually want to add them to your email list. And there's a specific, um, freebie or, you know, like right now I have a challenge going. So there's a specific reason that they're getting added to the list and you have promoted that reason. Um, and that could be, you know, you're offering them a free download to help them with A, B, and C. You're offering them a coupon for 20% off when they first visit your establishment, your restaurant, your hair salon, whatever that might be. Um, there's a specific reason that they're going there to get that. And if you make it very clear that this is the only thing on this page, there's nothing else to distract you, they're going to know name, email, or um, sometimes text marketing works the same way. So it could be text, um, cell phone number, and name, and they opt in and then they get what, you know, get what they came there for. And then the third reason would be that you may want to collect some additional information. And so for example, I have seen this happen with different software providers. And they may have a simple opt-in form on the front part of their website that is uh, for a download, which could which can get lost, but then they have an extended form that if you want to do a free trial of their software, there are some things that they need to know. And what they're doing is they're, they're data mining. That's what they, that this is what this is called. They're trying to collect as much data up front from the person wanting to do uh, the free trial 
as they can in order to be able to contact them and pursue the sale. And so what you may see is that, you know, an option form may just be a name and an email, whereas um, an extended data mining form would be your name, your title, your company, your phone number, uh, your email address, and maybe even a credit card authorization because you're signing up for a free 30 day trial and they're requiring a credit card because if you don't cancel it, they're going to bill you. And so you could see that asking for all of that on the homepage, one is a very large form and it could take up a lot of space. And so instead you may want to offer it in the, um, the fashion of either a pop-up form or having a completely separate page. And I've seen both done. Um, I think a pop-up form is probably, I, I would like that a little less because I think if you actually send them to a, a specific page where they fill out the information, um, it's less distracting. There's less distractions there and people are distracted constantly. I mean, you get uh, alerts on your computer, alerts on your phone, you get uh, notifications, all this sort of stuff. So the more you can create marketing and um, specifically email marketing and data collection, simple and specific and um, distraction free, the better off you're going to be in the higher conversion you're going to have. So number one is specific intent. Number two, I just touched on this, but you want to create a distraction free zone. So that means if somebody is coming to your landing page, the intent is to get them to fill out that form. That's it. You don't want them to do anything else. You don't want to add your menu buttons. You don't want to have a link to some other product or service. You don't want to have, um, you know, here's my latest blog post. You want them to fill out that form. Now, when they have filled out the form, there is a confirmation that typically pops up. That is where you can put that additional information. Hey, by the way, we see you're interested in this. Did you know we have open enrollment for blank right now? Um, or did you know that we're offering a free coupon for this? Or did you know um, that we have a free Facebook group? That kind of stuff. So, but the intention behind a single landing page is that you are getting them there to do a specific task, give you their name and give you their email address. And the less confusing you can make it, the less information you put on there, other than what they really need to know is they've arrived in the right place. This is what you're promising them. Here's the information I need in order to send that to you. Um, you don't want to just have a form. Obviously you want to have a little bit of information so that they know they've come to the right place. Um, they're reaffirmed into what they're getting, all of that sort of stuff, but that's it. You don't want to distract them with anything else. You can distract them and send them to learn more about you after they filled out the form. The third reason you want a landing page versus an opt-in form is that it makes it really easy for you to track whether or not people have converted. Now there's a lot of different, analytics available and some are more reliable than others. But when you have a specific landing page set up on your website and it leads to a specific thank you page, once they have um, completed the form, it is much easier to track the exact conversions of that page because you can look at the page and see how many website visitors went there. And then you can go to the thank you page and see how many people, um, actually reached the thank you page. And then the third reference point is actually looking at your, um, your opt-in form creator. In my case, I use um, Bloom and see if the numbers match for the number of forms completed and the number of people that went to the thank you page. So what I'm saying with all of that going on is that you can look at your metrics and make sure one, that it's working and that two, you're actually getting signups and um, that you're getting the completed form. And if something is awry and you, your website is showing all these forms are completed and then you go over to your email service provider and there's no people subscribed, something is broken. And so you need to make sure you go in and fix that. But it's much easier to know when you have a landing page versus an opt-in form, whether or not you can measure whether or not that's working and where the breakdown is. So not that you can't do it with an opt-in form, but I think um, with a landing page, just specifically if you are running a Facebook ad, you need to stick the Facebook pixel on that specific page. So um, you know whether or not it's converting because you don't want to pay for traffic if it isn't in some way converting through your sales funnel. 
Number four is that you can get new people to your website. And this kind of goes back to the point I just made, whether you're paying for that traffic to come or you're sending it organically, but you can get more people to your site and you can give them an introduction or a taste of who you are and what you do and add them um, to your list while they're there. So you can give them a taste of, so maybe let's use the example of you have a new blog post and you're giving them steps one through three of a seven step process and they read that and then they they get to the end and they're like well if you want um, steps four through seven or the complete guide you can fill out this form and then have that open up and i always have that go to a separate page you could do it either way with a form or with a page but i prefer the page again same reason Um, you're wanting them you're wanting to get their attention And so when you have their attention and that window opens, there's no distractions or like, you know, you can have another headline. Hey, do you want the whole guide? We, you know, um, one through three are great, but four through seven are even better. Give here, you know, just fill out your name and email below and we'll get it over to you in the next five minutes or whatever, you know, whatever you want to say. But they are there and then, you know, you can redirect them again. Uh, The fifth reason is that you can um, add more SEO and search benefits through your landing page. It gives you one more page for search and you can use specific keywords and SEO terms on that landing page that uh, will pull up in Google. And when you can do that, you can't do that in a form because it won't search a form. However, it will search a page. And so, and it by it, I mean Google. Google can search a page, but it cannot search a form. And so when you have that extra page set up, you, if you're really strategic about, you know, the description that you use and um, if you have even um, the ability to share that page, there's, uh, I talked about this, I think I talked about this last week, but I, I get confused sometimes if I talk about it in the podcast or if I talk about it in the Facebook group but you want to add sharing software in at the bottom of that page so that people can share that page with other people if they get value out of it. And that will also give you even more because Google likes interaction. They like when things are shared. They like when new content is added. They like to see SEO terms in there um, and they like to see more and more visits. So when you have a lot of visits to that page, they're going to promote that in the search rankings and, um, you will see more traction and more um, interaction on that page. And then you can also um, ensure that that landing page is content specific. So Google really likes when your URL is specific to the content on that page. And sometimes if you have a home page, you may have two or three different sections of information. Whereas if you have a landing page, they're going to that page for a very specific reason. They are going to get a download on blank subject. And let's say dog walking, they're going to this page because they want your free dog walking um, video that is related to how to walk an older dog that has leash problems that has been trained wrong. And so if you have information in, in, on that page describing, um, you know, here's all of the problems we see with older dogs that have been trained wrong, but don't worry, they can be trained just opt in here and we're going to send you our free video. And so all of that, you know, all of the keywords you could stick in there. And then if your URL is, dogwalker.com forward slash walking older dogs. That's, you know, it, the URL matches the content versus, you know, you may have a, a, most of your pages are going to contain multiple subjects and, um, infor- you know, pieces of information. And so they're not as specific. Google has a propensity to like really specific URLs that match the content on the page. So another good benefit. And then last but not least, we talked about this a little bit, but it's easier to track your ad effectiveness. Um, And that goes for the Facebook pixel, the Google pixel, and you can really track if what Google is saying and Facebook are saying are conversions versus what is really happening. And there are several measurements. I don't want to get into it too much because it's kind of confusing to walk through all of those components without looking at it visually. But um, that may be something that I tackle in the Facebook group. 
If you haven't joined the Facebook group, I would love to see you over there. Uh, there's a link in the show notes for you to go, come over and check that out. But it's small business builders, all one word on Facebook. And I do lots of little trainings in there and uh, talk about a lot of things that I talk about in here in a little bit more in depth. And I also try to do uh, some actual visual video training on things and I'm increasing that as we go. So if you haven't joined, go join, it's free. And I would love to see you over there. But back to being able to track uh, the effectiveness of your of your ad. Again, you with those separate pages set up and the um, connection of the Facebook pixel to whatever piece of the puzzle you're trying to track, you can actually make sure that what they're billing you for is actually happening. So if you have Facebook saying, yeah, we've had 500 people fill out this form and then you go over to your website analytics and realize it's 50 people, then you can say, I'm not, you know, I don't know if you, I don't know if you can go back and say, um, I'm not paying you for those, but you can actually, you have the um, statistics to show them that, you know, my website is only showing this many. So something is broken, please, you know, let's figure out what it is. So that's the six, they, they actually are pretty quick, pretty easy, but I also wanted to talk to you um, in this episode about you know, what if you don't have a website? There are some people that are brand new to business or, you know, they have a website, but it's super old and it's not functional and it's not supporting their business, but they don't want to invest in a website right now. So I wanted to give you some options um, because you, sh- in my opinion, building your list is should be the number one priority in your business that and selling things. Because if you have an email list, you can create a website later, you can create social media profiles later, you can do all of that later. However, building your list is going to give you the opportunity to have people to tell when you do all of those things. And so building and nurturing your email list is really, really important. Um, So what happens if you don't have a website or your website isn't working? Well, I wanted to give you a couple options. So First is, is if you have an email service provider like ConvertKit, they offer you the opportunity to just set up a landing page. And there are some benefits to this and there's also some downsides to this. Um, The benefit is, is that most of those email service providers like ConvertKit, Drip, uh, MailChimp, all of those that have those um, specialized landing pages that are part of the application, uh, they have templates and you, so you can easily go in and build an email and, you know, get your information in there and set up, you know, a, your actual page where people would go, add your content, add your um, fields that you want them to fill out and have it up and running relatively quickly, probably within five minutes. However, where the limitation comes in is that you cannot customize the thank you page Um, you might be able to customize the thank you message a little bit, but typically you can't add a link. You can't send your subscriber to, um, learn more about you because there's nowhere to send them if you don't have a website. And so using those landing pages and they have a benefit, a quick, easy, set it up and get ready to go. Um, most of them will allow you to add images and video, which is really important if you're setting up either a landing page or sending email um, because you want people to get to know you, especially since there is no ability for them to click on another link and go to your about me page or your home page or your contact page. Um, And so when you're building that, you want to add as much of your personality and your, um, well, your personality and who you are into that form. You in most instances can customize your colors and you can customize your form information. What I have found is most of them do not let you add your own fonts into their landing pages. They have a limited number of fonts. So if you're wanting to keep your branding on par and have everything match, you're gonna have a hard time with that. Most of them will not do that. Uh, There are some other options I'm gonna talk about in a minute that you know will give you a little bit more freedom, but for the most part, um, when you're using those built-in landing pages and forms in one of the email service providers, they're pretty limited. Uh, you can, in most cases, connect them to some sort of analytics, whether it's Google or Facebook, 
Um, and then there's another service out there that's called Segment. I just happened to fall upon it when I was doing some research for this episode. I don't know a lot about it, but apparently it is another analytics component that allows you to track, you know, how many people have filled out the form, how many people have um, visited the page and not filled out the form, all that sort of stuff, so that you have an idea. So there's some pitfalls to this. And um, I talked about a few of those, but number one is you can't have a thank you page in any of these um, email service provider options for a landing page. Uh, You can't direct them to other website content. The subscriber cannot learn more about you. There's no central hub for you to store content. Um, And you could be seen as not really being quote, in business or as a real company. And so those are some of the downfalls. Now, the other option that's out there, and I have used them in the past, there is a fee associated with this one, um, in addition to your email service provider, and that is Lead Pages. Now, Lead Pages does offer you the opportunity to set up a landing page as well as a thank you page um, that are, that look like real pages. So you would actually have a landing page where they could go and, you know, learn all about what they need to learn about for whatever reason you're giving them to opt in, challenge, download, um, PDF, whatever it is, training, event, and then you can actually create a separate thank you page. They have templates um, and they integrate with pretty much every type of email service provider out there. I I can't think of one off the top of my head that they didn't integrate with. It does take a little bit more, a little bit more tech knowledge to get that set up. Um, But they do have the ability to create a very personalized experience. So you can change all your fonts, your colors, your background images, um, and all of that stuff so that it matches whatever brand you're trying to put out there. And it doesn't look like people are going to a separate site. You can track for Facebook and um, Google and, you know, put those pixels in there. However, again, you're not gaining any traction for your brand because it's their URL, not yours. And so people aren't going to be seeing those forms unless you're out promoting them specifically. In other words, if they do a Google search to try and find your five day challenge, it's not going to show up. Um, because it's part of lead pages and it's not part of your website versus if you had that landing page or that opt-in, well, specifically that landing page on your website, uh, that could show up in Google and promote your website. So that's what I've got for you today. The six reasons that you should be using a landing page versus an opt-in form. Not that opt-in forms are bad, uh, but specifically the reason that we would like to see landing pages used and also Uh, five things to do if you don't have a website to get started to grow your email list. So that's what I have for you this week. Again, you can check out the Facebook group at Small Business Builders um, on Facebook. You just search under groups and there will be a link to that in the show notes. Next week, I am talking about why social media is killing your business. So tune in for that. In the meantime, have a wonderful week. Take care and I'll see you soon. Just a reminder, don't forget to sign up for my free training to create your irresistible download. Everybody wants a great free download. Why shouldn't you have one too? Grow and build your email list so you can get more clients by joining me on my free training at alisaconnor.com forward slash create my freebie. I'll see you soon.